You're watching Hot Facts with Robert Reese. Caffeine, watching Hot Facts with Robert Reese. Yes, this is Kenny Chris, and you're watching Hot Facts with Robert Reese. This is Poo Poo from Moreno Valley, and you're watching Hot Facts with Robert Reese. Hey, this is KG Sports, and you're watching Hot Facts with Robert Reese. Ye hey, yo! Hey, Hot Facts with Robert Reese, man. This, this your boy Dash Man, the cool tapping in with you, brother. Hey, um, shit, I'm right here on the, on a break in my dash right now, getting busy, but I figured I'd tap in before I eat some grub real quick. But yo, man, I like your channel, like what you're talking about. You know what I'm saying? I feel like we share some of the same ideas as far as, like, how to navigate this gig market. Um, So just tapping in, showing love, man. I seen your comment. Finally got a chance to hit you, bro. Whenever you get a chance back, man, just holler, man, for sure, man. Love, bro. Be safe. See if I can get this dude to talk to me real, real, really quick. What's going on, man? Nope. Nope. But I will find one that will sit down with me. Um, I will find one. I want to ask some very important questions right now. I want to see what is the state of homelessness and, you know, are they receiving any type of income or anything? I want to know what's going on uh, so I can let people know what's going on out there. Um, that's a no-go, I think. That's a no-go, I think. I'm going to try in just a little bit. Let me see what he does. All right, people. This is Hot Facts with Robert Reese. You are watching another one with Hot Facts with Robert Reese. Now, we've been going over racial separation and all type of issues that go on that need to be heard and people need to listen. So right right now, I'm right now I'm going around and I'm going to speak to uh, people that may be homeless. Some may not be homeless, but the state of America right now, there's not enough help going out for the people that we have here. And a lot of the focus is going on outside of the country. So right now, I'm going to go ahead and uh, ask a few questions with the gentleman right here. So we can kind of get in in depth with what the real issue is, okay? It's, 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 I'm not going to tell you what it is, but um, hey, well, hi, hey world, my name is Jay. Um, they call me Kenny, sorry. Blessing to be to you. All good morning. Have a blessed day. I'm going to say that first and foremost. Um, Thank you for letting me be on your podcast. But uh, this morning, I have a lot of things in my mind, but for homelessness out here, they don't treat them right. Um, I've been watching this for damn near all my life. Uh, the homeless people used to have their own community and they did, they destroyed it. Mm -hmm. And it got destroyed when my, obviously when my dad passed years ago, when we were like eight, nine, when we were kids. Homelessness wasn't homelessness back in the day. And homelessness is a state of mind and what people believe it is. When you get your home snatched from you, from the RRS and the, the government, it sucks. And no one knows what they're gonna do when it happens. You know, I'm just, just, just apologize, but uh, it's true. Um, no, no, be open and uh, frank. I mean, I mean, yeah, yeah, much, yeah um, this is hot facts. I'm my words not do too much. All right. Um, but, like for me, I've been here, I've been here, there, here, there, here, there, and I got stuff tipped from me. So this is one reason why I'm homeless. Um, I got screws, um, I got kicked out of my brother's house for telling the truth, and thought somebody was in the house breaking in, but I kicked the doors in and all that stuff, but the reason why I'm homeless. But the real reason why a lot of people are homeless, they want to be here. They want, they like the people. The people are what makes this United States of America, and they're cutting out the people. Um, a lot of people around here are getting their land stolen, if you don't notice. Um, yeah. Buildings are getting cut, torn down, trees are getting cut down, and they're letting other homeless people come in and they'll pay them to destroy it, no matter who they are or what they are. Right. Oh, they're paying homeless people to come or and... they killing them all. Kill and doing it wild. I'm going to tell you, like this coronavirus, 85% 85, 85 of our homeless are gone. That's our elders. Our elders... And our homeless are go hand in hand because most of them are, are that age. Right. So, what happened to them? Um, if they're not getting killed off by the fentanyl that they, they put out here, 
I, I can't say nothing too much about any other narcotics in the world because I smoke drugs. So <laughs> but I'm real. Um, but in this day and age, this 2020, they still got us in the wrong mind state. They got us trapped like we're stuck and we're stupid and we're slow. Like we're still slaves. Right. Now, how how's the food thing, though? Like, nah, man, um, y'all getting EBT or the cash EBT I don't and all that? No EBT, no cash, nothing. Um, I'm blessed every day to. Sometimes I don't even eat though, bro. And people act funny towards me. And they be thinking I'm always about trying to get into something, which I'm not like that person. But people sh look down on people and, and shun down on them. And you don't know what the reason why they're out here for. And I don't, I, sometimes I ask, sometimes I don't. But just to make logical sense on a lot of it, some people just, it's children, losing their children, losing their mom. Losing a loved one, it's really mostly losing a loved one, that main person in, the, in their life. And they lose them, it takes a toll on the whole family. Right. And it's kind of fucked up. Excuse me. No, you all right? Uh, it's kind of fucked up in the sense to say because 85, I got screwed, so 85% yeah. of us, it sucks. And, we're, and they try to play like you're a tweaker or you're fucked up. Now, how was the drug thing, though? You know what I mean? She uh, left off just hitting hers, you know what I mean? Oh, I but, got one in my, in my yeah. right now, but guess what? That's not it. So, okay, okay so. The, I'm going to tell you like this. Remember when weed was really, really, you couldn't get weed? Yeah. This generation doesn't know that, though. We need to take some of them back and let them know weed wasn't legal. Um, Methamphetamines now is like weed. It's ADHD medicine for the whole world. And it's smart. But at the same time, they're not doing it right. They are still trying, their laws are misformed. People are getting jacked and jammed up on the old shit. And the laws are fucked up. Like, just think about it. 85% in the 90s, early 90s. Could you go and go get a bag of weed <laughs> at the store? Nah, nah. All right then. Now you can go and get a bag of weed at the store and think that nothing, no one bothers you. You used to get criticized for just smoking a joint. Now, how is it with like the meth and stuff? How easy is it? Or how? E all right, not the meth and stuff. All right, so you go to the doctor. How easy is it for them to just pass you off a narcotic to you? Uh, if they, it's easy if you really want it that way. Okay. If, if you're in pain, and you really need it. Get it. But I'm gonna tell you, no. I'm a person that I only don't have screws because they put me in sleep and I had to have reconstruction. So I wouldn't dare take it, but. In this life, man, you only have one, and um, most of us are blessed to be here every second of every day. Some of us is, is like we're family. You yeah. might not even think about it like that, but we are because we're out here. I don't, I don't, if I don't see this man in two or three days, there's something wrong. We got to go find him or we're going to send somebody around to go look for him. Uh, old man, woman, uh, it makes no difference. We all look for each other when it's time. I know they be, when they go cooking and stuff like that, they look for me or they look for our friends or, oh, they are out there cooking, okay. Oh, yeah, so, yeah, y'all, yeah, so it's, for the it's, it's, for the food coming in, though, you know what I'm saying, some food coming come in, in but yeah, but y'all stay, but when it come in, y'all sticking together to make sure, yeah, all right, all yeah, us, yeah, all of us go get something to white, eat. black, Puerto Rican, Asian, Japan, uh, red, blue, green, purple, yellow. God, didn't, God said, don't starve it, man. Feed it, man. Right. Don't ever think that you're better than any man and that's what they're doing and in a sense there's okay. you guys got real community you guys got real community you got yeah, you got real the real love and real community you guys do that every day every day and you gotta deal with the fuckery too you gotta watch who's there for you or who ain't there for you right and in this game you could say you trust everybody it, it's a hard thing to trust nowadays it's hard because this way, when you grew up and your mom and dad was here, you could trust everything. You know, you right. know basically, right? If you live by your parents' rule from back in the day and you grew up and you just do part of it, you'll see life differently. Right. And you'll see, like, why is this happening? Don't ask why this is happening. Try to change it. It's yeah. hard. Uh, it sounds so easy to do, but it isn't. Now, let me ask you this. What is your... You you got it here, obviously. I, I'm listening to it. I'm I'm listening to, to it. So what would you say is your biggest challenge for you moving 
on to the next step? My biggest challenge is people to believe me. Uh, proof is in the pudding. I, I, I'm fighting for the land, bro. I, my dad gave me this land when I was a kid before he passed. My grandma gave it to him, well, gave it to us, and he took over. We were kids when, when he passed. So when I got this land, I was a kid, so I couldn't touch it. You know, yeah, right. So I'm here, and as a kid, I watched all my land and everything it took from me. So you trying to get it back, and that takes a whole uh, lot away from you, huh? It's, it's, it's even worse because I've been gone for them for 20 years, and I couldn't go deal with this, this, this issue I'm going through right now. I've been damn near killed three, four thousand times over this incident. I've say I've left my own kids and my own families on both sides, well, all three sides because I have Mexican and black and I have white and tongue in. It, I have a Crayola box. I have more than what you need to die. And motherfuckers will be talking like, oh, you don't own this, you don't own that. And then I tell you, you don't still believe me, but I might point something straight out to you. You'd be like, oh, this ain't it. And break this down to you guys. They don't believe you because of who you are. Because of what I look like, who I am, what I am. The reason why they don't believe me, because number one, I'm black. Number two, I'm short. <laughs> number three, I'm a gang member. That's hands all the way around the board. You're, you're, but as a child, as me growing up, I was a little kid helping all the elders. That's, that's why my dad got all this stuff because we were kids and they helped us. I was in a less unfortunate kid. I was in the foster care. My mom was in the pen. So right. who raised me? The people who raised me gave me this and introduced me back to, into the world with my mom, which I yeah, didn't want to do. No, I didn't. But I did for my brother. I gave up my careers for my brothers, my sisters, my cousins, my nieces, my everything. It's just not about me. I sacrifice for everybody. And people don't get that. One person might sacrifice their whole life for just something positive. Just that one moment. What are you really living for? I gave my, I, I'll fight a man just because he did something wrong. I, if I feel you're in the wrong, I'm gonna tell you. Right. And I'm not trying to get, get into it. I'm gonna say, bro, you're wrong, I'm gonna explain it to you. But other than that, I got thieves, yo. I got thieves for you in a real run. Right. Stand up, man. Don't know why the situation was going on, but as a man as that I am and my character that my dad raised me, you see a woman get hit or something, you walk up there and be like, bro, that's not, not cool. I ain't trying to get in your business, whatever, whatever. But I wasn't in nobody else's business. I was just coming to the aid of my friend. Right. And and me coming to the aid of my friend, I got these and I lost everything. I lost my family, both sides, my brother, my sister, my mom. Uh, went through coronavirus in the hospital. I don't know how long I was out, bro. Right. But um, to this homeless community, I thank them every day. Because um, without them, some some days I wouldn't eat, bro. And I'm, I have no one really like to help me. Well, let me tell tell, tell you this. Thank you. Right, right now, I'm finna go get you something to eat, man. Oh man, I, it, 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 thank you for that. But appreciate the love, I man. I, 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 I really like appreciate this. the time, time, man, for sitting down and do, doing this. Look, I'm a lot, a like lot this. of people won't speak. I'm just like this. I thank God for every second of every day. I got another chance. And everybody found, falls down on their luck. Every, everybody does. I've been fell down on my luck more times than you can count. And I'm still here. I, I've i been one of the baddest motherfuckers on the face of this planet. And I'm pushing myself to get back to that. I, my motivation, my hustle. I know I'm some of the baddest gangsters on the face of this planet. That ain't it. When you... When you're a gangster, you change your ways. You still that gangster, it's still in you. But let me break this down. Who you living for now? You're not living for just you no more. When you're young, you're thugged out. Did it. I ain't, I'm living for the homies and that. <laughs> Mama praying. Mom, I got mama's prayer, she got me. But when you start having that woman, you have to take care of her, mm -hmm. them kids. Um, you start changing. I had to leave the state just to get a peace of mind. And they, they were right down there killing me. Right. And, I got here and came back home on parole. I had to fight parole in three different states. Got lost in interstate compact twice. Got exodited three times, got lost. Came back. And I'm still fighting for the same thing that my daddy died from. Man. Um, my daddy had died from a heart attack and stroke. The stress. He's a big man. He's about 6'9", 300, but I'm almost about 340. Never 400 pounds. 
that's a big man to pick up by yourself as a youngster. Yeah. And your mom had lupus and she's sick too. This is my this is my immediate family. This is not my birth family. Yeah. This is just my family that I know growing up. So when my birth family comes in with the play, it's no catch twenty two or nothing because my mom and already knows that this is mine, but I'm I put everything on the background for my family. Right. So when I finally get a chance to come back after what I need to come after, everybody ridicules me, puts me down, makes me feel like shit, I ain't nothing. Tears down the woman that I was with, which she was a beautiful woman, and they tear her down and throw her to the wolves. And it makes her seem like I did it. And I've probably been the only stand-up man in her life that really, really says, I still do love you, and I still fight for you. You know what I mean? Like, we can't be together like that, but I still stand up and fight for you because I know what they did. Right. And it hurts me. Just any man that put their self in my, in my shoes, just think about that. You come home from prison, find a good one, you're still in the life a little bit, but you're not pushing yourself. Yeah. And all of a sudden, all hell breaks loose, but you still handling the best of your ability. And you go through the next five years with the worst shit, and then the next three years after that, you, you're you trying to build yourself back from nothing. Right. So to any man or anybody or any person that's listening to this blog, anything, stand up. This I'm going to tell you. Just like here. Stand up tall. Brush yourself off. Look at the next man. I said, I might need your little little assistance, but I'm gonna stand up like ten toes down, and me like Nipsey hustles that, hustle and motivate. I hustle and motivate every day. These screws, young. I, I want you to see these. These are never coming up all. Are you here? Right. I can't brush my teeth. I'm two faced. It. Right. And it hurts me to say that, cause I can't be in the sun. I have seizures. I have strokes. I, but I don't show it. I, I fight with it every day. The pain is what drives me. Okay. The pain is what drives me to keep going and surviving because that's my motivation. And I do it for the kids and my yeah. elders. The ones that can't fight for themselves. The ones that get manipulated that they think they ain't manipulated, but they is. And you want to fuck with and fight with me and fight with me. Let me break this down. On God's green earth as a flag over there. You mm -hmm. might not see the flag right here, but yeah, there's an American boy. flag over there. I'm very patriotic. This foreign and domestic I fight for. I'm a people's person. I love fighting for the people. I'm an underdog. This is what I do. I'll be damned cold day in hell. Oh, it'll be the hottest day on heaven's record and the coldest on hell before they get this land. Right. You don't, they've been trying to kill me. My family's been damned and ridiculed for this. I don't go around my own blood family or my other family because I'm trying to keep them safe. This is more than what it means to you and people don't get that. But in a sense, I'm gonna tell you, God is good all the time. Stay humble, stay diligent, be real. Pray every morning, put your mom and them first. Put your family first, God first, then your family. And me, back in the day, it'd be like, God, hood, family. Because I will not never put my family in the middle of the hood shit. But if you're in the hood, y'all be real. If you're gonna be a gang member, don't have fucking step. Don't play with the fuckery, don't play with it. This is a real life. Like my big brother told me, life ain't no game. So I ch I'm changed it. Life is not a game. You gotta take a step each day to make yourself better, improve, and grind. Even when you have nothing, I have nothing. I'm just watching everything on my just get pillared. And I can't say nothing and do nothing about it. Got my brother fucked up, got my sister fucked up, and my cousins fucked up, everybody. They all dispersed, but guess what? This is our land. We're in a state of the world today as, as a black man. I'm going to tell you this, Rich. We're rich, we're rich. And a black man owns everything, but they will not give you that credit. All right. Thank that's you. What it, that's it, man. One, one love. You want to get I'm a pizza? Uh, yeah, I used to get some small, bro, a couple dollars, bro. All right, all right. You don't want nothing? All right. All right, yeah, get a, uh, get a drink and, um, yeah. Get something you get. Yeah, go ahead, do your thing. This is what you do, community outreach. What you want, a couple big bites? What's the, um, what's the combo meal for the, uh, for a drink? And a, is there a combo meal for a drink and a hot dog? All right. All right, so, um, so let me get, well, I got the 7-Eleven thing too. Let me get two big bites. 
Huh? No, yeah, I'm buying it for, for for him. So I want you to ring it up. So I'm um, so I. Oh, all right, all right. Yeah, he said just come over here, and then I was I was trying to get it ahead of time so he could, you know what I'm saying? But we all right, we all right, we all right. Try to get a bag of chips. Bag of chips? Bag of chips? Nah, you all right? All right, man. No problem. Get get these big bites. Hey, this is KG Sports, and you're watching Hot Facts with Robert Reese. All gravy, baby. baby.